Marquess, speaking to Sergio Marquess, one of the most technical marketing in the world. His talk is on ISO 26262, which is an access and access safety mechanism with the quantitative FMEDA. He's been marketing manager at Wellcome Solutions and has over 20 years' experience in electronic and deployment of advanced hardware verification solutions across Europe, North America, and Asia. His expertise covers IC design, function verification, safety standards, including ISO 26262 and DO254, and detection of hardware trophies. Can you speak on your my, my, uh, my. Okay. Yeah, Can ahead. I start? Okay. Yeah, just go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mike. So uh, uh, so uh, one spin is about uh, um, okay. providing okay. certified IC integrity products. And uh, uh, IC integrity, there are three main pillars, functional correctness, uh, safety and trust and security and in this talk of course we'll be fo focusing on the safety particularly automotive application and the compliance to ISO 26262. Um, I assume audience has some familiarity with this topic and just uh, a reminder that there are two aspects uh, in uh, ISO 262 uh, functional safety for hardware and uh, it's uh, you know systematic failures and the random failures and using a hardware safety mechanism to prevent and control uh, failures due to random faults that can happen in the field uh, during operation of the circuit and again the focus of this talk is on on the random aspects um, <clears throat> so if we look at the uh, iso 262 standards uh, it defines uh, some uh, uh, hardware uh, safety metrics uh, in particular, we have three key metrics that the standards define the point fault metric, the late and fault metric, and also the uh, PMHF, the probabilistic metric for our, our random, um, random failures. And uh, all these are really covered by the process that uh, I will uh, introduce in this presentation, but for time reason, I focus on SPFM and LFM. Uh, SPFM and uh, this metrics basically provide evidence uh, that the hardware safety architecture, uh, you know, is uh, uh, sufficiently good, let's say, in preventing or controlling failures uh, in order to achieve a determined uh, automotive safety integrity level. Uh, <clears throat> the safety integrity level, as I guess you all know, is ACLD. And uh, uh, the main point here is that uh, the, this target is quite uh, hard to achieve. I mean, if you look, for example, for SPFM for SLD, you need the 99%. And the uh, SPFM, uh, really the focus is on uh, single faults uh, uh, causing uh, failures and you and the one the violation of safety goals and you want to minimize those and the latent fault metric is also important because uh, you can have situation where fault on its own does not cause any failure but uh, it is there it remains latent it doesn't cause any problem but another faults arrive and maybe this fault on its own shouldn't cause a problem but together with the other latent fault cause a problem and the violation of the safety goal so that's why the standard also is concerned with the what is called multi-point faults and in this case we really look at the dual point faults where we have two faults at the same time um, if we look at the process uh, uh, quantitative uh, failure mode and facts and diagnostic analysis process this is now quite established in the uh, automotive hardware development flow and we basically have a chip with a lot of safety mechanisms safety goals and we need to uh, uh, generate on uh, ISO 26262 work products. Here, in particular, we are looking at these metrics we mentioned, SPFM and PMHF. And uh, we streamlined this process into three steps. Uh, one is uh, safety analysis, then diagnostic coverage, and then safety metrics, the computation of the safety metrics. And we will look now into this into, into details. So in the safety analysis step, uh, what we do is uh, we do a um, safety aware partitioning of the hardware 
following the ISO 262, uh, you know, terminology parts and subparts. And uh, this is uh, it's called safety web partition because it's not just, it doesn't necessarily follow the hierarchy uh, of, of your uh, design. Um, and uh, then we do some diagnostic coverage where we can, for example, initially put some conservative estimates for each subpart, how the subpart is protected by the safety mechanism. And then if it's needed, where it's needed, we can do more accurate analysis and uh, fault classification. Um, and, and then we put all this information for each subparts together and derive the SOC level or chip level metrics. And uh, one spin has a, a range of apps to, that are integrated to automate this all flow, the fault contribution analysis app for the safety analysis, uh, fault propagation analysis and fault detection analysis apps for the diagnostic coverage determination, and the hydrometric computation app that can be used in isolation or together they're integrated to provide a complete flow. And we actually have customer some using the complete flow, some using only specific parts of it. So if we look at the safety mechanism, in particular hardware safety mechanism, the goal is to prevent of control failures. Just to remind here, we can have, for example, a fault in the intended function logic. Then this could cause some incorrect output, but we could have a safety mechanism that can detect this issue, potentially also correct it, provide the corrected output. That's why it's in green here. And also raising, for example, an alarm. Um, of course, here in the in this uh, safety mechanism, uh, we might want to distinguish between the portion of logic that can only affect the diagnostic outputs, and this is the part of the safety mechanism that we call passive, which is also in the title of the presentation, but in the sense that this logic in the safety mechanism can only create uh, errors in the diagnostic logic in the diagnostic outputs. And then we can have active part of the safety mechanism where we could actually have a fault here that uh, creates a failure, which of course is an unfortunate situation because you have you know, a piece of logic that is supposed to protect this one, but actually then this one, a fault here could create a failure. And uh, uh, you can imagine that hopefully there are a few of these faults uh, hopefully, the safety mechanism logic is uh, maybe small compared to the logic that is protecting. But uh, if you are trying to reach 99%, you need to do a multi point failure. And here we have, for example, the sample of a fault into a safety mechanism, which maybe on its own doesn't create a problem, remain latent there. But then at some point, another fault occurs. This should be detected by the safety mechanism, but because of this additional latent fault, uh, uh, there is no detection and, and uh, uh, the, fa the, the fault uh, leads to a failure. Um, so we have a case study here that we, we did with, uh, sorry, with uh, uh, Renaissance and we presented the paper at uh, uh, DVCon Europe uh, in October. So, by the way, there are more details there. If you want to uh, have the paper and you cannot get it, drop me an email, I can share with you. So, we have a, a, a FIFO uh, that is used in automotive application and it's, uh, it uses uh, a memory and some control logic for the pointers, read and write pointers to the FIFO and generating the full and empty flag. And we have uh, an ECC mechanism, so we have an encoder that takes uh, uh, 32 bits, it writes them into the memory, but also generates seven bits of encoding, uh, also stored into the memory. And then when we read, the, these are read, uh, go through the decoder, which may detect errors and potentially correct them. And, uh, uh, you know, as you can imagine here, the, the, the metrics will depend also on the size of the file. So we, we, the, we can do the safety web partitioning using, in this case, the FCA app for contribution analysis app. Uh, and we uh, uh, derive C parts, the memory, control, clock and reset tree, and then encoder active and the decoder we split into active and, us and the passive parts. Uh, we have uh, some information what the subparts are uh, uh, protected, mainly the memory potentially also the encoder, because if we have some problem in the encoder, hopefully it will be picked up by the decoder when uh, uh, there is a rate of the FIFO. 
And I think the interesting thing here is that we have this uh, failure for this metric we report, the failure uh, safe uh, fraction, the faults potentially violating safety goal, the failure mode coverage with respect to residual faults, which is really what goes then into the single point fault metric, and the uh, failure mode coverage with respect to uh, multipoint fault, which is uh, relevant for the latent fault metrics. And uh, here, you know, we can already, let's say, plug the information from the safety specification and say, okay, I have verified my safety mechanism, which is a different task, is a functional verification task. By the way, we also have a, a paper on how to do that, in that case using formal. So if you're interested, if you're verifying an ECC for safety mechanism, uh, you can drop me an email, I can share that with you. But here we assume the safety mechanism has been verified, it works as intended. So we can say, okay, the memory is basically pretty much protected. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, then if we, if we move, uh, uh, you know, uh, additional uh, consideration without doing uh, any uh, fault simulation or any other analysis, uh, we can immediately start also pl plugging some other figures for example, we apply, you know, uh, an expected uh, uh, coverage of 90% for the encoder, and then for the uh, M uh, MPF multipoint faults, uh, we we put here 90% for these subparts for the memory and the encoder because we assume that there is an additional safety mechanism that will scan the memory at key on test. Uh, 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 to detect latent faults, which is typically the case in this kind of system. So through, you know, this, uh, this consideration, we can already plug some conservative estimates. Here, for example, we say, okay, uh, we have zero uh, here, zero here, zero here. So kind of uh, pessimistic estimates, and we can already derive some SPFM and LFM number for this, uh, for this whole five. Now, we might reach our tag already, maybe, maybe we don't. If we don't, one course of action can be, can be okay. Now let's put some additional effort to do some additional analysis and try to go from this kind of pessimistic estimates to more uh, uh, realistic numbers or more accurate numbers. And what we did is uh, uh, fault classification on certain subparts uh, using, in this case, uh, the fault detection analysis app. You could use uh, fault simulation, for example. The key point here is it doesn't make sense to just use uh, uh, fault simulation, which is uh, expensive computationally, uh, and uh, you know you need to stimulate, uh, uh, you know, to just do it everywhere. It's better to do it where and when it makes sense. And here we, you can see we derive uh, some uh, more uh, accurate metrics, which are uh, no longer as pessimistic as before, and we have a sizable improvement on our SPFM and LFM metrics. Uh, <clears throat> for example, here we find that the uh, number of faults in the decoder active uh, could actually be detected and raise an alarm. Um, we will do some analysis on the latent fault and uh, we find the same here 20%, which is uh, an improved figure. So uh, just an extra additional slide on how the FDA work, this fault detection analysis here. Uh, uh, we, we basically have uh, uh, injecting faults into the decoder, so we do this at the netlist level. Can, we, we actually did this on both the FPGA and the ASIC netlist of, of the ECC FIFO. And we just need to define the observation points, uh, the, that output basically, and the diagnostic points, in this case, the alarm. And uh, the fault list is for the parts is can be provided by the user or by the uh, fault contribution analysis app. We might have some input constraints, and basically the tool, without providing any stimuli or anything else, uh, classify the faults into detected and non-detected and non-propagated. And uh, obviously, the faults in this case that are classified as detected go, uh, you know, that improve our metrics. So how do we go from this uh, subpart uh, analysis to the chip level? So we have a dedicated app for this. Uh, how to match your computation up, you need to basically plug your numbers here manually or uh, if you use the entire flow, this is done automatically. And then, you know, under the hood, uh, there are the right formula to use, the right base failure rate to use. Actually, it's not uh, 
as straightforward task as you can imagine to combine all this information. That's why we, we automated through, through this app. Um, so uh, just a final consideration on the, effect, the size of the FIFO. So of course, as you can imagine, you know, the encoder and decoder sizes, uh, they don't increase if you increase the size of the FIFO. And actually, if we, the, the, uh, the metric we, we show, for example, SPFM were, was 90% for a 16 entry FIFO, pretty small, 32 bit data width. But if we go to 1024 entry, you would find that the SPFM increases to 97 plus percent. And this makes sense because you are enlarging the portion of the stick that is protected, whereas this stays pretty much the same. However, the control logic that is like the, the logic for the pointers will increase for, with the, as the size of the for increases. And so yes, this is not protected. And actually, you could see that uh, if you want to reach 99%, you may actually not reach it with this, uh, with this type of implementation. You might have to change something. And uh, so the, let's say when you try to reach these high metrics, you know, a portion of the logic that are not protected becomes very, very relevant. And we have shown uh, this analysis to take this into account without, uh, you know, putting a huge additional burden on the user. So to conclude, we have this uh, uh, automated and efficient uh, um, quantitative FMEDA flow. But the goal is to really reduce or eliminate even this uh, accurate fault classification as much as possible. For example, fault simulation, uh, you know, because it needs a test range, it's uh, good quality test vectors, it needs a uh, high effort for debug. And so we, we, we have this initial step with the safety hardware partitioning, which is really computation not so intensive. We have an update and can do quite quick, and, and then applying the diagnostic coverage analysis, additional analysis where it makes sense to improve the conservative estimates. And finally, there are, you know, combine all the subparts results uh, to, to have the soft level metrics. So once again, there is a paper on this if you want additional uh, details. And uh, yeah, we have, as I said, user using a, a portion of the flow or like in the case of Calray, using the entire uh, flow uh, with FCA, F FDA, and HMC apps uh, to automate the entire family A flow. So thank you for your attention. I hope it was, uh, the audio worked well. Um, if you have any questions.